I would I would think Simon yeah. that uh, they've moved on this. Whatever Glazer has said, yeah. whatever his demeanour was, the fans have decided. Yeah, yeah, they do mean it. They do want to communicate. They do want dialogue. So let's see what we can do. Um, I think that's a combination of what else can they do with the greatest respects in the world. I understand that certain people would like to advance the notion that the fans will change the direction of travel on every aspect of every single thing. But the fact of the matter is, is that the Glazers are there and unless someone's going to take over from them, then they were what you had. You could rail against them and you can spit bile at them and you can listen to Gary Neville telling you how you should be running your business and how dividends shouldn't be taken and how they should be paying down debt, which quite frankly is none of Gary Neville's business. If... Manchester United's board of ownership turns around and says to the fans, we are going to commit to making sure the stadium is fit for purpose. We're going to commit resources to make sure that Carrington, the training ground, fit for purpose. We're going to commit a resource, a significant amount of money to making sure that we remain on course to be a competitive football club, more than competitive football club, a winning football club. Then, 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 and if we're going to find a mechanism, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. No, that's going to give fans the, the fan share of yeah. equal voting rights because it just makes no sense. Just with due respect to the fans, if you're going to ha- if you're going to have fans influential in making financial decisions with the greatest respect in the world, and I don't want to move into the Jurassic territory that Alan Sugar went into, which is basically fans shouldn't be anywhere near the boardroom, fans shouldn't be anywhere near the boardroom. There's a way to run a football club and there's no way not to run it. And what the fans don't like at Man United is they do not like the fact that the Glazers leveraged the debt, paid themselves dividends, paid too much money servicing the debt, and the club has been in decline over a period of eight or nine years, not winning anything. And that doesn't mean that the fans are any more equipped commercially to make financial decisions about how the football club should be run because the football club isn't in financial difficulty. It's not having problems. It's still being globally successful in every single economic transaction it goes into. It's just got to employ a better manager and buy better players. So so convince me, Simon, and to convince the supporters listening, is this anything more than lip service from Glazer? But they don't want to be. There's a certain segment of supporters that don't want to be convinced. You, they don't want to be convinced because it doesn't matter what the Glazers say now, it's what they've done in the past. The Glazers didn't come to this voluntarily, did they? They've come to this on the back of a disaster of epic proportions that's completely eroded any substance they may have had, which they didn't have very much of anyway. It's lit the blue touch paper with a section of activist Man United fans that are now barking at the moon, suggesting that the Glazers are in, a, are in an invidious position, they'll boycott them or they'll do whatever they want. The Glazers are not paying lip service. They're they were doing, hated before the Super League. But, yes, that's my point, precisely. So they're doing something now that perhaps they should have done a long time ago, but they, it's not going to alter the narrative, Jim. People are going to say to them, how dare you buy our football club in that fashion? And they're going to say, well, we did. And how dare you take dividends out of it? Well, we have, right? And, and, and what do you think is going to change? you think they're going to change their viewpoint? All they're doing now is addressing the poor level of communication and the lack of attention to detail that they could have kept. They, they, shouldn't, be answering, they shouldn't be answering questions from little goblins like Gary Neville about how the training ground set up. Because, it, because, it, because it's so unnecessary. It's weak. 20 million, 25 million pounds on fixing a training ground shouldn't be an issue that someone's able to pull them down on. The stadium not being fit for purpose, even though they say they spent 100 million quid on it, they're opening opportunities for cheap shots. But it's a fair point, surely. No, it's it's something... And, they, Gary, and no, Gary never loves the club of that. No, there's no denying. You're, you're quite right to say that they should be pulled on it, but they shouldn't put themselves in a position where they needed to be pulled on it. They, 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 and now what's what's happened with the Glazers is that everything is fair game now. Every aspect, really and truly, it's not about whether Carrington's fit for purpose. Because of course it's fit for purpose, but it, may, it could be better. It's not really about the notion that maybe certain parts of the stadium could be better. It's about the fact that Manchester United fans loathe the way they bought this club. They think it's an outrage. They loathe the debt that has been put on the football club to service their purchase of it. They loathe the dividends. But fundamentally, a large proportion of this, and I don't care what Man United fans say, would be less vociferous if Man United were winning the league. Well, I was just going to say that uh, is, is really the only way to suppress that narrative is to get the right signings in, whether you've got the right manager or you know whether you think it's the right manager or not. Get the right signings in, win a league, win a Champions League, and then this goes away, in effect. Mm. Well, I don't think it goes away because I think there's an entrenched position which they are... By the way, it's their football club. They're entitled to have this view. Just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean that they're wrong and I'm right. But the, but the fact of the matter is, is do we look at it honestly and say that irrespective of how they bought the club, irrespective of how many dividends they've had, 
Has it really, really stopped them from trying to buy the world's best players at times? Has it really stopped them buying an £80 million centre-half? Has it really stopped them from buying an £80 million player in Paul Pogba? Is it stopping them from trying to buy Jadon Sancho? Is it stopping them being indexed to Harry Kane and potentially maybe getting Harry Kane if Harry Kane wants to move to Manchester United? Is it stopping them from buying Bruno Fernandes? Is it stopping them from employing no. costly managers like Jose Mourinho? No. It's the lack of success that underpins it that then that adds salt to the injury. Highest earning goalkeeper in the world. All of these things lead to a conclusion that ultimately the Glazers are the devil incarnate and then we have the media vantage point which basically says the Glazers refuse to apologise, which they didn't do. They just didn't take the opportunity to apologise. Mm. They didn't refuse to apologise. Who said that? Well, Jim, Jimbo. And it all comes down... And his to, mate, Sally. But it all comes down to the bottom line as well, Simon, as we get to a break. And I, I've asked you up in times, I'll ask you again, and you always come back with the same one-word answer. Will the Glazers still be in charge this time in a year? Yes. There you go. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.